Hello, and welcome all to another Neon Cab video. I'm Phil, and I'm glad you're here with me. If you're new here, please consider liking and subscribing, and welcome. Today we are taking an early look at Apple's newly announced AR VR headset called the Apple Vision Pro. So, recently Apple announced their foray into AR and VR, or as they put it, spatial computing. We'll talk about that difference in a bit. Apple releasing a new product line is always a big event. Interestingly, Apple never mentioned the words AR, VR, Metaverse, or AI even once during the presentation, which I definitely noticed while watching. I won't expound upon that further, but MKBHD has an outstanding video on the topic, which I'll link in the description below. So let me just get the bad news out of the way early on here. The Apple Vision Pro will retail at $3,500 starting sometime next year. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! Quite the steep price, especially compared to its competitors in the market. But actually, let's talk about why there really are no competitors to the Apple headset based on Apple's presentation and the hardware and technology behind the device. One of the most interesting things about the Vision Pro is it doesn't sync to your iPhone like rumors originally thought. The technology in this headset is insane. It's a standalone computer sporting a full M2 chipset, the same type that you can find in a Mac Mini or a MacBook Air. It has its own Wi-Fi connection, and the display gives the equivalent of 4K resolution per eye. It also has a new R1 chip, which is dedicated to handling all of the input from all of the cameras packed into the inside and outside of the headset, freeing up the M2 for general computing, graphics, etc. So, how is this headset different from ones that are currently in the market? Well, current headsets like the Quest Pro have cameras on the outside as well. These are used in a similar fashion to help the headset detect objects in the real world, such as controllers or walls. The difference with Apple's solution is that there are no controllers. In a functional callback to Steve Jobs introducing the iPhone and asking, why would you use a stylus? Oh, a stylus, right? We're going to use a stylus. No. <laughs> no. Who wants a stylus? You control Vision OS with only your hands and eyes. Apple doesn't have any controllers. They don't plan on making any controllers, which in my opinion is great. One of the worst things with VR headsets is putting your controllers on your hands with straps and struggling to orientate them after putting the headset on, or using a very crappy video pass-through to locate them, only to turn it off afterwards. It just never felt right. In addition, the Vision Pro uses your eyes for navigation as well as your voice for input. Nothing else is needed. But for those instances when you do need a little bit of tactile feedback, such as using a full-fledged keyboard and mouse or a game controller for gaming, those are supported, but the entire OS is hand, finger, eye, and voice operated by design and by default. Now, let's talk a little bit about the technology inside the headset that makes this magic work. On the front, there are two main cameras, two downward facing cameras, two IR illuminators, two side cameras, a LiDAR sensor, and a true depth camera. All of these sensors help the headset keep track of objects in the real world in relation to itself, as well as keep track of your hands no matter where they are. You have to really try to make the camera not able to see your hands contorting yourself into frankly uncomfortable positions to get your hands far enough above or below you for the camera not to see them. You can also occlude a hand with another one, however, but the hand above can simply control the interface at that point. Whether you're left-handed or right-handed, the hand control is just baked in naturally. On the inside of the headset, there is an incredible amount of LED illuminators and IR cameras facing the wearer with the express purpose of tracking your eyes, both for controlling focus in Vision OS as well as powering the other differentiating factor of Apple's headset, the forward-facing display, which shows an exact view of what your eyes would look like, where they're looking, etc., as if the headset was transparent. It's not transparent, 
but this basically gives the impression of that transparency to connect you to anyone else who might be in the room with you. Basically, if you can see them, they can see your eyes. If, however, you're experiencing content where you can't see the outside world, there is a Siri-like colorful animation playing instead, letting anyone around you know that you can't see them at that moment. Also, if you're immersed in VR and someone comes into the room, they will gradually fade into the virtual world so you know that someone else is there. I'll withhold judgment till I can try this out for myself, but this seems far better than the other headsets where when you're full on in VR, uh, you have no idea if someone is there uh, in the room looking at you without turning on the pass through camera, thereby sort of breaking immersion. Apple's interface and the way they're doing it just seems much cleaner, much better, but like I said, we'll see. Let's get back to the eye tracking, however. Everyone who has used this has had one word for it, magical. Now, magical is a term, whether you agree with it or not, that's applied to many Apple products. But in this case, I think it's substantiated. Your eyes are the mouse, essentially, where everywhere you look, everything you look at is something that's ready to be acted upon. Tapping your thumb and pointer finger together is a click, and what's clicked on is what you're looking at. So, I thought about this, but essentially this is really how every computing device we have ever used has worked. Your eyes look at what you want to interface with. First, you used a keyboard to navigate a cursor to where your eyes are looking, then a mouse. You get the idea. But really what Apple has done here is reduced the interaction down to its most basic, most human motion. You look at something, then manipulate it with your hands. Any other company would have used a virtual cursor or laser pointer to give the user feedback as to what they were going to interact with, but Apple's headset is so precise, this isn't needed. If you're looking at it, you will be able to interact with it. Genius. Also, because of this, unlike other headsets which pretty much all use controllers, you don't have to have your hands in front of you at all, gesticulating wildly to move, highlight, select items using controllers that, while light, do tend to get heavier the more that you have to hold them out. Apple's solution here is you have your arms and hands positioned whatever way is comfortable. Your eyes navigate and your hand, resting on your lap, on a cushion, on the couch, can interact. In the instances where you come across a text box to fill in, you can use a floating keyboard to type but you can also just speak what you want in the field and it'll type it for you. Anyone who has used search with an Apple TV and remote knows what this experience is like. Also, to add to Touch ID and Face ID, we have a new way to log in. Optic ID, which uses the iris's unique features to authenticate users, which also confirms that multiple family members or coworkers can use this $3,500 device. So, what can you use this for? Well, I see a few different major uses for the Vision Pro. One, you can use it as a full standalone computer. It has a full M2 chip inside, plus Wi-Fi. Plus, as a headset, it has screens for you to look at. And while wearing, you essentially can have as many screens as you like and place them anywhere you want all around the room. Did you always want six 32-inch displays but didn't have the room to do so? Well, now you can. They even showed one interesting thing in their demo where a man wearing the Vision Pro looks directly at his Mac and the screen shuts off and then the display kind of shows up above the Mac. And the screen looks to be the size of like a 55 inch TV. So that means you can get the smallest and most portable laptop and still have a giant display wherever you go. Now using the headset in this way is if you wanted to use any full Mac OS app running on the laptop rather than the headset. The headset itself runs something called Vision OS, which looks a bit more akin to iPad OS. We'll have to wait uh, till closer to release or after to know app compatibility with Vision OS. Can it run Xcode, Final Cut Pro, Photoshop? We'll just have to see. But whatever Vision OS doesn't run, you can use the headset as a display for your Mac, which is exciting. Another use is watching movies, which I really think will be a killer feature for it. 
I've used other VR headsets before to watch films and what looks like my own personal IMAX theater. And from your perspective, that's just what it looks like. And it's amazing. I'm excited to do the same with the Vision Pro. The last thing I wanted to talk about is the battery life, which might be the most disappointing aspect of this headset. As it stands now, Apple is saying with the attached external battery pack, the Vision Pro can get two hours of use, which isn't enough really for a movie even. Now, there is in fact a USB-C port on the back, so you can attach the headset to an outlet and use it as long as you want. But for those scenarios Apple showed of someone kicking back on the couch, watching a movie, I don't know, having it attached to a nearby outlet isn't horrible for something like watching a movie, but what if I wanted to get up and make a snack or, or go to the bathroom? If tethered, I'd have to take the headset off rather than what I feel Apple wants you to do in such a situation and just leave them on. It just seems a bit disappointing, but that's where it's at right now. This is a pre-release showing, so they could improve the battery life. Uh, they could increase the power pack battery size, which is said to basically be two iPhones sandwiched together. Or they could stuff an M3 inside at launch instead, greatly improving the battery life from just a node shrink. Let's hope the M3 is where they end up. So, who is this for? The Vision Pro as it stands now are for early adopters with the money for additional productivity or entertainment, and for developers who want to develop on the platform. I think Apple really didn't want to release this quite yet. I feel like if they could have, they would have waited till the Vision Pro was the size of a pair of sunglasses with all the current tech the Vision Pro has and all day battery life. But the technology is just not there yet and its competitors with increasing speed are working on their own VR and AR equivalents. And once they get to sunglasses size, they have the capability to replace a multitude of devices we use today, sort of how the iPhone replaced the music player, cell phone, camcorder, flashlight, alarm clock, well, you get the idea. Getting this out sooner gets developers and the populace ready for the eventual, much smaller, much cheaper, sunglasses size version. And well, I can't wait for that future to come to pass. If you made it this far, please consider liking and subscribing. It's greatly appreciated. And hey, if you're interested in gaming at all, me and my son have our own gaming channel. I'll link it in the description below. Once again, thank you for spending some time with me on Neon Cap. I'm Phil. Catch you on the next one. Tell you something I could do I could be running or I'm chasing you But I won't Cause I got better, better things to do Rather spend my precious time Chasing somebody who loves me too